We live in an exciting age where new technologies tackle seemingly impossible problems every single day. But can tech offer hope to an artist battling ALS or restore hearing to a young musician? Founder of Not Impossible Labs, Mick Ebling, says yes. Reporter Andrea Vasquez has this interview via Google Hangout. Mick Ebling, thank you for joining us. Uh, you're the founder of Not Impossible Labs. So what is Not Impossible Labs? What do you do? Not Impossible Labs is a company that is based on the premise of technology for the sake of humanity. And what that means is how do you take existing technology, uh, anything that exists in the place in, the, in kind of the, the world, how do you maybe create new technology? How do you engineer, hack, make something? so that it accomplishes a fundamental human and social need. So technology that we make so that it uh, accomplishes a human need. That's, that's what Non Impossible is, that's what we do. And our mission is to change the world through technology and story. And what that means is obviously the technology part I just explained, but because we have a filmmaking background and a storytelling background, whatever we create, we then go and uh, take that and tell a really powerful story around that. So we'll make a movie or a short, and that's how we get the word out about the, the work that we do. How did you get started? I got started because back in 2009, I met a paralyzed graffiti artist named Tempt. And Tempt, in, at that time, or kind of in the 80s and 90s, was one of, one of LA's most prominent graffiti artists. And I didn't know him, I didn't know anything about him, but my wife and I went to an art benefit and was exposed to him and his work. And we found out that he had ALS, the Derrick's disease. And it was just one of those moments, one of those kind of chance encounters that was stuck in the back of our head. And then come towards the end of that year, we decided to make a donation on behalf of my company to the Temp One Foundation when I sat across from his brother and father and said, hey, we're gonna make a donation. What are you gonna use it for? Their response is, we just want to be able to communicate and talk with Temp again. And that was when I learned that the majority of the world doesn't have what I thought everybody had, which is a Stephen Hawking machine, right? A, a device that allowed you to talk with your eyes. And they said that that's not the case, that that's only the case if you have money or insurance, and they didn't have either. So that kind of set the course of a, a principle that I write about and I talk a lot about and that we live by here, which is, uh, the principle of commit and then figure it out. And so I told his brother and father, listen, that's ridiculous. We have to make something for him so that he can communicate and do his art again. And then off we went. And then we went off and we created uh, the iWriter. And the iWriter is this. This is. That's it. This is an example of it. Wow. And Steve Jobs would not be very happy with it. You know, it's not supposed to be pretty. It is. Uh, it is a cheap pair of sunglasses from the Venice Beach Boardwalk, uh, a coat hanger, and a web camera. And what this does is when you put it on, uh -huh. it focuses the camera back on your eye, and then it uses the center of your, your eye, your pupil, as a tracking point. So as you move your eyes, so does the cursor move on the screen. You're writing the letters, the physical letters, with your eyeballs? Exactly. With your eyeballs. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> with the movement of your eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it a group of experts when you get a request? We have principles that we work by and live by here. And one of them is that you, you surround yourself with people who are specialists and experts in their particular field. So with the iWriter, I brought together a team of brilliant people from literally the, all the corners of the earth, from in Hong Kong, the Netherlands, Germany, New York, Utah. Every, everybody came in from all kinds of places. And we just worked for a, for like a, a fast and furious weeks. One of the projects that you have uh, is Music Not Impossible. Can you tell me about that? With Music Not Impossible, what we did is we recognized the fact that most people who are deaf, for them to experience music, it comes through the form of very kind of blunt vibrations. If they go to a concert, they're just feeling the kind of the bass or you know the, the speakers turned up very loud, or that's the way that they experience music. But having friends who have been deaf or who are deaf, um, we realize that those vibrations are fairly, they're not very accurate. They're just kind of a general projection of, of these vibrating uh, kind of tones of, of the music. So we said, well, wait a second, what if we were able to dissect 
music and actually project those vibrations, but in a very smart way, in a very acute way. So we created a solution that takes a music file and actually separates it out, fragments it out, and then projects it across the different parts of your body with little haptic vibrating motors. So what you have is you have now, instead of feeling music, and it, this, is, this goes for people who can hear, can't hear, rather than just being hit with uh, kind of that, that blunt instrument or that blunt vibration, now you have very tactile, very uh, acute vibration patterns for the lyrics or the lead guitar or the bass guitar, the drums or the synth or whatever it might be. So the thing that we created for Mandy, who is a, is a deaf singer, this is the first time she was actually able to feel her music in a very precise way. And the testimony to, to the fact that this actually worked, when we played one of her songs, he was able, she can't hear, but she was able to sing the song perfectly on time because she was able to feel the music. So when she started singing, it was like the exact spot in the song that the lyrics were supposed to come up. So it was an amazing experience. I look forward to seeing what else comes out of your lab. Thank you, Mick Eveling, for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you.